And this was what Elizabeth had to say about her lesson review. <sighs> I hate you. Let's help another amazing teacher improve her lectures. This time, she comes all the way from Canada. Well, this is where I am right now, Canada. Her name is Elizabeth Page and she teaches leadership. She's got a really nice course on leadership. She was kind enough to let me review her lesson publicly and she did a great job. I found a couple of things that could be improved. Let's do it. All right, so we have here her lecture and we can scroll back and forth and she's using a talking head with slides which is very typical for online courses the first thing that i notice is that her head is a little bit low i have here my grid and her eyes should be about one third from the top so that could be improved let me just point this out look there's a lot of head space out there the next thing that i notice is that her eye line is way off the camera lens ideally you're looking at the camera lens like i'm doing right now so it feels like you're speaking to your students and she's reading from a teleprompter which is a little bit too far to her right and look at her eyes they're pointing this way this is why i said that she's looking to think back to and unless her students are in think back to then she should be looking at the camera all right. And the problem is that if, if you don't look at the camera, you're losing that emotional connection with your students. And it's tricky. And I told her it's tricky because if you want to read from a teleprompter and it's on the on the side, it's, two things are going to happen. It's going to be pretty obvious that you're reading from the teleprompter. And second, you're going to lose that emotional connection because you're not looking at the camera. So there's some teleprompters that you can put your camera behind the teleprompter. I'm going to put a link in the description to one that I use in the past. It's very simple. You just put it in front of the camera and then you're looking at the lens and you just use your smartphone. The next thing I notice is that her audio levels are slightly low. They should be always hovering around minus 6 dB decibels and they're around minus 12. So they're picking at minus 12 and this is very easy to do in your editing software. You can bring the volume up a little bit and then it will come out nice and loud. The next thing I noticed is that her background could be improved a little bit, maybe either shoot with a plain wall behind, or if you're going to have any decorations, make sure that they're not too distracting. It's not too bad in this case. Now we do have here this little person, I don't know if that's a demon or what it is, and we have this lamp. Uh, the problem with this lamp is that it's using incandescent light, which has this yellow tint. If you're going for that yellow tint, it's fine. But then we have this blue lamp here. That's an LED lamp that you can buy on Amazon. In fact, this is the same type of lamp that I'm using right here. But if you're gonna use something to tint the background, make sure that it's tinting kind of like the entire background, like in my case, so I have it nice and high. And it's flooding evenly the entire background with blue light, which looks, I think, pretty nice. In her case, now we have three, kind of three different colors. There's white, light coming from the front then we have this yellowish light in the back and we have this bluish light so it could be improved a, a little bit another way to create separation is to make sure that your background is blurry you can see mine is a little bit blurry and the way you accomplish that is by making sure you have a camera with detachable lens and you use a lens with an f-stop number that is very low and you get a very shallow depth of field or this effect which is called bokeh which helps you separate from the background and it makes it look very cinematic in terms of lighting i can see her face is a little bit dark. Ideally, you want your face a little bit brighter than the background. And I'm just going to give you an idea of how that would look like. I just go and grab the mask tool on Adobe Premiere. We can turn the exposure on just the face area. You can see that. And this is done artificially. You want to do this obviously right from the beginning with the right amount of key light on your face. So it's brighter than the background. There are a couple of more things I think she could improve. Her slides look pretty good, but there is one slide here where the font is very, very small. Nobody's really going to be able to read this. And remember, a lot of people take courses from their mobile devices with very small screens. So they're going to be squinting trying to read this type of font. So make sure that if you're using text, it's big and not too much of it. So that's something that she could improve. The other thing that I noticed is that her speech is a little bit stilted and unnatural. And this happens a lot when you're reading from a teleprompter. Now, with some practice, you can make it very natural to read from a teleprompter. So in her case, maybe she needs to practice more or maybe just not use a teleprompter. I used to use the teleprompter for some of my lectures and I never got good at it. So I decided, you know what? I'm just going to do a bunch of takes to get better at it and then just look at my bullet points and then just speak off the cuff on real time. And if I make any mistakes, I will repeat that take or simply delete those mistakes and it feels a lot more natural. And that's it. Other than that, I think she did a great job. I hate you. Now, I just want to remind you that even if your lectures are not perfect, you still can be a very successful online teacher. 
In fact, when I created my first course, I didn't know what I was doing whatsoever. So I made lots of mistakes. Technically, everything was all over the place, but I still was able to find success. It's really more about your ability to teach, being engaging, and maybe you're not, you're not looking at the camera too much, or maybe your slides look like crap. But what I'm trying to do here is helping these instructors take their lectures to the next level. Now, if you want to improve your lessons too, you can use the same tool I'm using to grade these online instructors. You can download it at grumo.com slash lesson tool. And if you want to see 39 recommendations on how to improve your online lessons, make sure to watch this video here, where I cover all the tips that you need to make sure your lessons look fantastico mundo. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.